my other daughter had called me and she said, you know, in a very kind of shaky voice, she said, Mom, um, we've been in an accident. We happened upon the accident. When we pulled up, they were actually pulling Trey out of the car. First thing we know, Trey, he was actually seizing. I had my radio with me. I advised him that we needed the helicopter and some more units because there was other people hurt. But he was definitely, at that point, very critical, still seizing. You know, we did some initial things to maintain his airway and got an IV started, things like that. The tones dropped for Horry County and we were listening on the radio, so we already knew that there was a wreck. We knew as soon as we launched that we were going to pick up a pediatric patient. From the air, you could see that it was a major incident and it was just, it was spread out everywhere because so much was happening at one time. We arrived in the ER and then the doctor came and grabbed Beth and me and said, hey, can y'all fly this patient to Charleston? Trey looked bad, he really did. Um, it kind of got to your heart, you know, people, family was crying, the doctors were worried, you know, and we knew that time was a factor on this. Beck and I went out there and talked to his mom and dad and said we haven't seen him yet, introduced ourselves, but that this is very serious and that we're gonna go to the pediatric trauma center down in Charleston with him because the injuries that he has, they can't care for him here like they can down there. He's obviously had a, a severe head injury. He had swelling, you could tell. Uh, severe bruising. He had a poor respiratory rate, which led to a lot of other complications with the head injury. Uh, it was a domino effect. We weren't sure what was gonna happen. This might be the last time they ever got to see him. When we left him in uh, MUSC, I didn't think there was more likelihood that he was gonna be alive. So I actually saw Trey two days after this happened. He was just, he just looked like he wanted to die. And I just felt horrible. And after about 10 days or so, they started telling us he had a 3% chance of regaining consciousness. He was in a coma like 58 days. And then he woke up. He was not communicative, and his eyes were stuck to the right for like three straight weeks, stuck completely, both eyes. And of course it was a word here and a word there, and then it was three words, and then it was five words, and you know, there was little sentences and stuff. I mean, he had to learn to swallow. He had to learn to breathe, speak, hold his head up, lift his arms up. And then he was in the wheelchair for a while. I was at Grand Strand and one of the trauma nurses also works for Horry County and he was on scene that day. And he said, do you know a Trey U. Smith? And he's like, well, I just wanted to tell you that um, he, he had really bad injuries and we didn't, nobody thought that he was ever gonna do well at all. And he actually stopped by and saw us the other day and he's walking and talking and has decided he wants to be a paramedic now. And I was like, that's fantastic. I can't imagine what it is like to have people's lives depend on your skill. They're ha hailing him a hero because of what he's come back from, but you know, we're hailing them heroes. So it's all, you know, it's a whole bunch of high-fiving going on and we needed that. The, the outcome now is, is just one of those that I can't describe, you know, how it makes you feel. You go to so many calls where people don't do well and to see somebody make a recovery like this is, is, is big. It's not an individual accomplishment or the fire department, it's, it's everybody. It's the EMS service, it's the helicopter, it's the hospital, it's where they send them for treatment, where they send them for rehab. So many things have to come together for that to happen. But to see him now, it's you know, nothing short of a miracle. It's like, oh wow. So it really made my day you know, to see him out, doing the shenanigans and dancing and having a good time and being a kid. We have good days and bad days, but we don't have good days like this very often. And this is why I do what I do. You see somebody that, against all odds, is just like, no, I'm not giving up. I'm gonna wake up, I'm gonna go back to school. It's pretty amazing. It's really inspirational. And this county's so big that it can take 45 minutes with good traffic to get from some parts of it to a trauma center. So it's very important for people here to be able to get to definitive care really quick. And so for us to be here and be able to provide that service for them is, it means a lot to me to be able to do that. I mean, I owe them so much. So for them to f be so happy to meet Trey and see Trey is, I mean, if that's the least I could do, I would do so much more, you know, if I could. I'll do anything to 
help them realize how important they are, you know? Toad Beth, she was my hero. 